Here we have the cleaning station. It's a little messy now. I need to clean up again. But basically what I do is I'll take apart something like this. This is a, the, uh, the pivot that comes out of here. All right. Take it apart. Uh, did I ever get the spring out of this one here? I don't know. Uh, soak it in uh, salt, and that's just regular gasoline to kind of get all the oils out of it. Once I get the preliminary soak with gas, I'll shoot it with some brake clean, kind of get any residual off of that. Then I'll dunk it in my first bucket of Kim Dip here. Perryman's Kim Dip. Put it in there and let it soak for about 15, 20 minutes. Take a look at it. If it looks like it's getting pretty good, I'll put it in my second barrel. This is fresher, newer stuff. So that's kind of partially contaminated. Clean it with this one. And then after I do that, I'll go through this whole mess. Uh, I use that to pull the spring out, by the way. Uh, you can see used Q-tips here, dirty sock, dirty old rags. I clean throw that one away. It's thoroughly used up. I'll use a variety of WD-40 or Brake Clean or Simple Green, whatever seems to be working the best. Scrub it, scrub it, scrub it, clean it. I usually have two dips of a uh, Simple Green, you know, like a dirtier one and a cleaner one. All of them now they're about the same level of dirt. Once I'm completely satisfied, it's completely clean. All the carbon's out. All the all the orifices are, are unblocked. Um, I hit it one last time with Brake Clean so it gets completely dry. Let it completely dry out. Then I will assemble it. This little bucket of oil, make sure there's no, um, you know, air bubbles in it. Kind of put it together under here, and then once you snap it all together, I'll put it in a vise and compress it just enough to get the little snap ring. It's like a little cap that holds it all together that won't go in when you take it fresh out of the oil. You got to bleed down the oil just a little bit, and when you get it completely done, you know it'll come out. It'll be rock solid. You know, all these are are in and installed. I also clean out these pivots here. I don't think it'll show up on the camera, but let's put the light on. You see, I'll go through there and clean out all those wells, get them all good and clean, so it doesn't put fresh, dirty, a dirty oil back in it. Uh, torque these back up to 62 foot pounds, and you're good to go. You'll also notice I have the camshaft out. That's because I had some problems with it. I have some scoring on the camshaft, it had scores around the base circle of these two lobes. You know, the lobe itself, that it lifts the cam was fine, it lifts up the rocker was fine, but the base circle was screwed up. Being that this is a hydraulic lifter, I believe it keeps pressure on that base circle all the time, so I didn't want the rocker to get gouged up by those scratches that were around just the base circle. Again, I have no idea how that even happened, it was weird. Uh, Took it to a shop, they polished it. I've read somewhere you're not supposed to polish a camshaft or because it can take off the sharp edges, but I don't think that really would make any sense on this kind of car because of the way the rocker arm's designed. But anyway, whatever. Um, camshaft to go back in after I get all these. I'm just might as well leave it out there, it's easier to work, get everything out of the way. I did put the, uh, I did take the uh, timing cover off, and I do have, let's see, where'd that light go again? There we go, hold on. I don't know if you can see it, there's that little wood piece down there. Can you see that right in there? That's my cam, my uh, cam, my cam tensioner block. What that does is it puts the, uh, it keeps the, 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 the spring tensioner in place down in the uh, front cover here. If you don't do that, that ten spring tensioner will pop out and you, you have to take the front cover off to get it all back together. But anyway, these are all done. Like I said, all these, these are ret the retaining caps I'm talking about, these little things I'm twisting right here. They should all be loose, but fully snapped on. And that's what I'm saying. The, you can't snap them on unless you compress these things a little bit. And to take it off, uh, I've already disassembled and everything, but basically you remove, you remove the, the pivot out, then you get a little screwdriver and pry this lift, this little cap off, and then it all disassembles pretty easily from there. You just have to make sure you don't lose a little spring. That's that's the hardest part to do. And, and, and they get the plunger out, it's a pain in the rear. There's a plunger down in there that there's no way to get out easily. I actually saw another guy do it. He uses uh, this tool here. <laughs> you jam that in, it basically catch the plunger and then gently pull it out. It's kind of a struggle because it's kind of wants to pull a vacuum. So you have to pull that plunger out. Once it comes out, it's good to go. Uh, the plunger I'm talking about, 
not this one. Where's the rest of the parts? Here we go. That's the cap. Okay, there's the cap. It goes like this. The pivot goes on there like that. I think the spring is still probably in there. I haven't gotten the spring out yet. And let's see what else is left in here. Oh, here we go. Oh, the spring is out. Here's the spring. This thing right here. This thing right here resides in the bottom of this guy right here. So it's like this. Like that. And you, you know, the problem is how do you get this out? Well, what you do is you basically take this pin, go through straight down into it, catch it like that, and tug it out. Now, easier said than done. It doesn't really work that way. It, you know, it's, <laughs> You have to kind of work it out and let the vacuum, you know, release and slowly extract that one piece. But, you know, like I said, they, they've all come out. I've done 12 of them now, and I eventually I got them all apart, so it's just a matter of being patient. Anyway, i got my gloves on. Don't worry. I'm trying to keep my hands out of these chemicals as best I can. So I got that. I'm doing them in order, so this will be the number, let's see, three, two, one. And I'm talking about one starting from the front of the engine. You know, cylinder number one, that's one, that's two, that's three, so they just 12 all the way straight back. That's how I kept them in order. I don't think it really matters. I mean, it's not like a, like a mating surface, you know, just pivots on the, on the back of the rocker arm, but still, I figured why not keep them in order, might as well. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, like I said, I have to go through here and uh, reinstall the cam here. I got some assembly lube everywhere i had a little bit of dirt right in there you can probably still see a little bit of brown in there it's like a little bit of staining that was from the burnt oil uh, i did my best to get, get it all off but i know i might have missed, missed a little bit and this thing is just filthy dirty i mean you can't believe the carbon chunks that i'm still digging out that's just, i just stuck my finger in there and just what comes out okay that's one little carbon chunk that's just sitting in there. And that's all in this, in this valley. Uh, I'm not too worried about it right now because I'm gonna eventually, look at that, yeah. Um, I just wanna run this thing normally aspirated. Just let the bottom end work a little bit. It, any, any dirt that's in there, it's already done its damage anyway, so I'm not too worried about it at this point. But my, my, my plan is to you know, reassemble it. I, I just, I just couldn't run these these rockers, those scored cam there. That was what was bothering me. That's why I didn't want to do it. But it'll look much better now. I don't have to camp the cam somewhere else. I got another room. I'm not gonna bother bringing that out. But I wanted to clean that bit up. I didn't want the valve train to self destruct for some reason because it had old, caked on, dirty oil and the lifters weren't working right. I didn't want to go down that path. But everything else, you know, we'll see. I'll start it up. I'll check for leaks. You know, do some. Uh, I'll look for uh, exhaust gases in the coolant. You know, I'll install a radiator on it and do the whole whole nine yards, just like my other one, my other engine. And if, it, if all, all that passes, I'll probably take this engine apart, pull the cylinder head, uh, take the pistons out. You know, bearings, everything. Um, just because, you know, why not? I don't anything else to do. So that's the plan. Is a uh, but I have to base light. I just want to base light it normally aspirate just to see how it sounds. And plus, this, is, this kind of stuff drives me crazy. That's the main reason I want to take it apart. If it's this dirty on the top, and when I pulled the pan, I had the same kind of filth. Um, again, I, I don't know if there any damage was caused by this, this, this level of lack of oil changes, but I just don't like it. So I'm going to try to get it all cleaned up and before I put any turbo. And the other one, well, that's the other thing, turbo. There's no way I'm running a turbocharger. I just got one rebuilt, a really nice oh, uh, original equipment turbo, rebuilt it. It looks beautiful. There's no way I'm gonna run that turbo with this kind of crap in the engine that might somehow find its way into the turbo bearing. That'll just nuke that thing in a heartbeat. So we're not gonna do that. This engine's gotta be clean. Then I'll run a nice uh, synthetic uh, high zinc oil, I think, um, I think Valvoline makes a synthetic high zinc, and I want to do the high zinc because of the, the tappets, you know, they're, there's, there's no roller bearing, it's a flat tappet. Um, so high zinc, synthetic, synthetic for the heat and the cleanliness, but I'd have to get the filth out first, 
just so I don't contaminate the oil that's going to end up going into the turbo. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm hot and I'm tired, so I'm going to call it a day. Thanks for watching. Bye.